be holy. If you preach to somebody, I've thought about, I told you about the touch. The extent of that touch is like the, the Greek and the Hebrew background word of that touch is a man, like a man and a woman, you know, lying down. Thank God the Bible just put it that way. He didn't say that because of young words and mothers. You know, when a man and a woman lie down, they don't just say your nose is big, your mouth is wide, your head is this. No. You know what I mean. You see, that touch is like that. You see, even at the level of that touch, you cannot make that person born again. You're wearing a righteous, you're having a righteous clothes. You are wearing a righteousness. And you touch somebody that is not righteous. You say, you can't make that person born again. You can't make that person righteous. Even Jesus. Do you know how many times Jesus preached to the Pharisees? Preached to the Sadducees? Preached to them? You know, one day he said, I'm telling you, God is my witness. When I saw him say that, the first time I read the Bible, it took me off balance. It was like a, a time bomb. A man, you know, boom. He looked at them and said, You will die in your sins. Hi! I said, Hi. These people have been hearing. Why can't they change? Why can't they? they Do you know the first people that come to whenever Jesus started teaching? The Pharisees. Because they will come to see what they will get to destroy them. The Savior of the world. Coming to preach. The first people that will come. They will be with the first person to be there. And the last person people to leave. And he looked at them. I came with good news. I've been preaching. Now I'm about to die. And you are not changed. And you say you will die. He condemned them. Now, no one see that will speak and they come to pass if the Lord has not approved. And when he says yes, no one can say no. And when he says no, it was as Jesus. Do these people know exactly what came out of the mouth of the pastor? He's blessing everyone, but you look at them straight and say, You will die in your sin. You will die. That brings the meaning of sin, unbelief. You will die. And the wages of sin, unbelief, is death. And the Bible says, read the next one. And the priest answered and said, No. No. Continue. Then said Hagar, Yes. If one that is unclean, by a dead body, uh -huh. touch any of these, uh -huh. shall it be unclean? Shall the person be unclean? Now he's saying, if somebody unclean, if somebody that is bringing bad news, if somebody that is an you know, I will just, I'll come to that, but let me tell you the meaning of law, what law, how law, the description of law, not the meaning of the, the description of law, how, how you will go to Ecclesiastes chapter, we're not going to read the whole place, go to three. You know, it starts from verse 1. He says there is a time for this. These are laws. Time to kill. Time to run. Go to verse 14. Which chapter? Did anyone hear the chapter? I said, Jim, is there something happening with Jim? We have to pray for him. Something is not working well. What place did I call? Can somebody help me? I called the Christ, right? Yes. Chapter what? I didn't mention chapter. God, how I wish I didn't mention chapter so that I will not think what I'm thinking about Jimmy. Because Jimmy is asking when I say you ask again, you ask again. Chapter 3, verse 14. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Sometimes I'm bringing that guy in Nigeria that knows how to spell Bulari. Spell Bulari is a small thing. He's spelling Bulari for 30 minutes. You know, <laughs> I like the way it's spelled. And that is how the spelling of Bulari, it has more than 200 letters. <laughs> the guy can spell it for more than three minutes. He's still spelling Bulari. <laughs> it's a very easy thing to spell. And they give him gift and money. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. 
and know that listen now, listen, this is law, description of law. Whatsoever God shall eat back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, or nor anything taken from it. Do you know the law of God is that you shall not die but live? But you don't even accept it. Why? My evangelism cannot make you born again. Even if I hammer it on your head twenty times, it can't make you born again. Stay to your bone of the spirit and of the words. You shall never see the kingdom of God. He said to your bone of God. He said to your bone again. All these things are law. I have discovered it. And I'm sharing it with you. But it's hard for you. Because that guy, he says it's a law. If some of the righteous come and tell you, touch you 20 times and tell you, you will not die in this sickness. God have you to. He says it's impossible. You know what I'm talking about. You have been going to church for how many years now? You have been hearing the word of God. Very hard. In the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, whatever the Lord do it. Do, no, it can If it's a law, if Jehovah's law, Jehovah's law can never change. Same way in our verse 13. He says, somebody that is dead, somebody that is unclean, when a sinner or when a liar come and touch somebody good, he said, read it, read it, what will happen? And the priest answered, and the priest answered and said, Shall it be, it shall be unclean. It shall be unclean. And you know, example of, I remember when I started at uh, ACF in Australia here. I mean, Apple. the first message I preached, I cannot forget because it was for a reason. We started at Kuru in Malaysia. It was a big challenge. And I started, uh, we came here, I started at the again. And the first message I preached was what? I told them, it was 32 verse 15. Unless the Holy Spirit comes down, the wilderness can never be a fruitful field. And I gave his explanation of, I used when you have a land, empty land, and you leave it for, because we were about starting a prayer meeting, so that we cultivated two prayer. Even Jesus said it. The Bible said one man came and planted Jesus. But why men, pastors, me and you, instead of sleeping, I mean, instead of the, you know, praying in the night. All we do is plan how to extort money from people, eat tight. How many times do you see me here preach about that? How many do you see me preach money? I don't. It's not my business. There are a lot of people. 90, 95% of pastors, that's all they preach. So why should I waste my time preaching what 95% of pastors are already preaching? Money, money, tight, tight, money, money, money. And it's the least thing in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, you are faithful with the least thing. You are faithful with money. But you are forgotten the weightier matters of the kingdom. Matthew 23, 23. You have forgotten righteousness, justice, and faith. Weightier matters of the kingdom. I don't talk about money. If you have not listening from the 95 other percent pastors the whole world, it's not for me, you believe. You believe. We are the people when they start is money, money. Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? If this prophet is for you, if this prophet is for you, come and drop $100, come and drop $10. Or oh, that's what they do. Can I prophesy? And you see where they are sweating. Can I prophesy? 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 Drop money, drop money, drop money, drop money. That's all. I don't have time for that. There are revelations, there are things people have not known in the Bible. And I can't die without exposing as much as I can. And where I stop, my children will continue. They continue from where I stop. That's why on YouTube, I have all my messages. More than almost 2,000 messages. Thank God for technology.
like the law I'm breaking out. Go to John, uh, look, let me show you something. Just read faster. We're not going, just read that. To, uh, to 47 and, uh, Luke chapter 8, 47 and 48. Shabbat. Luke chapter 8, 47 and 48. And when the woman saw that. In, which, which verse are you reading? 8, 47. 8, 48. Read 46 first. And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me. Somebody has touched me. Something has touched me. Remember the law. The law is that when somebody good, like Jesus, if Jesus touched somebody that is unclean, no matter how, he cannot change the person. I'm coming to how the message, evangelism, benefits us. I'm coming to how, how we can be born again. We still need evangelism. Because that's the first knowledge. If Jesus, Jesus was, you know, everybody, it's not, forget about the miracle. The miracle is not the message. The message is the kingdom of God. He said, go preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. People should enter into it. That's the message. That's the main thing. That's the greatest born again we are talking about. The Bible says Jesus, upon all the healing he was doing, touching people, touching people, you know, he could not transfer the kingdom into them. Why? I'll come to that. But the law says, if somebody, look at the woman with the issue of say, if only I'll touch him. When you touch Jesus, wow. The issue. Boom. Let me tell you something. More especially ministers, pastors. You are very vulnerable. You are vulnerable to cancer. You are vulnerable to diseases. More than unbelievers. More than even your members. Pastors are the one that should be catching sickness easier than their members. I'm telling you the truth. You don't even need to win, they just touch you. But look at our master, learn from our master. Before morning, he will go and pray and say, what are the things that are coming today? God will say, because you have prayed, when they come, it will be upon my head. And if we keep a relationship with Jesus, I'm talking about ministers, ministers. Whenever the woman with the issues of God touches us according to the Lord, the Bible says, it, it, it must transfer. You know what will happen? Jesus will call, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet know how. And Jesus will take it. Pull. We are vulnerable. I didn't, doctor didn't find diabetes in my system. Until I ministered to somebody that has diabetes and God touched him. And that's why I'm in Australia today. We were in Europlane. I ministered to somebody. And God healed him. Touched him. Remember, signs and wonders. That's what I can offer. Through evangelism. I cannot offer divine healing. And Jesus said, if you go back to what you are doing, this will come up. I ministered to somebody. God touched him. Healed him. Touched him. When God touched him, he said, we need you in Australia. 2000, 7th of, I mean 9th of November, 2009, I was in aeroplane with somebody. My evangelism touched him. But he wasn't, he, he was, thank God he was already born again anyway. But it wasn't my evangelism that made him born again. They say you're coming to Australia. That's how I'm in Australia today. And when I went to apply for my visa, he sent me every document. Apply for my visa. And they said, Pastor, you have diabetes. <laughs> Look at it. I just dealt with it. Diabetes. What does that mean? I touched somebody with diabetes. And because I wasn't as powerful as my master Jesus, then 
Going to hospital is a hard diagnosis. Do you know what I said? I said, if I cannot destroy this diabetes, I'm not qualified to go to Australia. I'm telling you, that's me, that's Pastor Joseph. When the doctor said that our children, twins, will not live, God knows I'm not lying. If the twins had died, I would have resigned as pastor. Because you can't give to people what you don't have. I stood before the doctor. I said, what is your name? He said, tell me the name I will remember because you still see me carry these twins. What was I doing? I have already put in my, name, my life at stake. I said, God, if I cannot pray out my own children, how will you send people for me to pray out their own children out? People we are saying on Facebook, it's not because your marriage is a success. Ask my wife, my wife, the first that entered Australia, I said, sweetheart, you know I'm a very foolish boy. You know I'm a stupid boy. When you judge yourself, no man can judge you again. You know my weaknesses, sweetheart. You know I used to, I can bite you, tie me into your flesh. With this, because of this, my gratitude. And I said, if I ever do you anything wrong, and you say you are going to divorce me, and you divorce me, I will resign. I'm not qualified to be a pastor. Because it's my fault. If I can't look after you, if I can't change when I found out that I'm not doing good in this place, I'm not doing good. If I cannot, if I cannot look after you, Man that doesn't look after her. As she's a living, she will, on the last day will see all these things. And I kept on saying, one day she said, why are you always telling me this? I say, I'm putting myself. I don't want to preach to others and be a castaway. I want to follow the law. I want to obey the law. The day you, see, you keep on saying, this is your Bible, Dracula Bible. I can't bear it any longer. And you say, I can't marry you again. I say, see that, it means I'm not qualified. What will I give the world if I cannot look after only one person? And this is not that somebody is my, is my enemy. She has already accepted to answer my name. A good name is better than this. And I can't love you. And I can't forgive you. And I can't pray for you. And I can't die for you. God will not trust me with other men. Because only one person I can look after him. If you divorce me, my own is gone. I've broken the law. Because <laughs> what happened in the day of our wedding? Out of, I love you, love you, sweetie, 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 sweetie. And God said, it's like they're in love. Oh. It's like they love themselves. Oh. Okay, if they find it, they want. let me go and attend to their marriage. And Almighty Jehovah. The one we are, this God we are talking about is a consuming fire. He said, don't take God's patience as if he's slack. He can never be slack. He's just giving you more time to see if you will repent. And you know, when God gives you time, he gives you one second. Do you know what it is? A day before God. A day before man. A day before God. It's one thousand before man. We say, he said, I can give him one more day. It's a thousand years. I'll be patient for one hour. It's almost 20 years. And Peter said, don't ever, ever say that God is slack. He is weak. That's why he has not punished you. He said, it's not his weak that anyone should perish. He's just giving you time to see if you're a guy. He's just giving you time. Where were you reading? The issue of love. Luke 8. Yeah, got him. <clears throat> yeah, 46, if you read 46, you are reading 46, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, uh -huh. Somebody had touched me. Uh -huh. For I perceived that virtue is gone out of me. Touched. 
just have pop. Now look at it. I'll be giving you an example. If somebody enter here now, a messenger of bad news, hmm. I'm telling you, you see how it is. I start giving you fear message. <laughs> Something is happening. If you go there, you die. If you, what especially, sometimes it is the doctors. 